Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, working on the 39 Forgotten Hot Rod project again. And you may remember in the last video, uh, I did a little bit of wiring and kind of put the dash back together and now the thing starts with uh, the ignition switch and the push button on the dash, which is really great. Now, next thing I wanna do is try and get this thing to the point where we can run it a little bit longer with a cooling system. So the big thing we need to tackle is getting a radiator hooked up and all the associated uh, modifications needed to do that. So. Uh, first thing we need to do is get the spacing of the radiator right. I have this radiator that I won at the online uh, car parts auction that Mike and I were, were doing and Mike was bidding for me. I went on a limb from a, one poor photo and guessed that this was a 39 Ford radiator. It turned out it was. I think I won it for like $2.50 or something stupid or $7. I don't remember. It was really cheap and it is actually in really great shape. Um, so I've already started mocking up some different stuff. I have a flathead upper radiator hose. I think that'll work. That's just that is new, a new reproduction. It's just dusty from sitting on my shelves. And I bought a new Y block lower radiator hose um, that's you know made for a Y block. Might have been for a truck. I don't remember. But it looks right. And uh, so we're going to need to brace shut two of the outlets or, or inlets and uh, inlet and outlet on the radiator to get that uh, so that you know we don't use those other ports. And we also need to get the radiator sitting right. I've already mocked up some rubber bushings um, that I had from sitting around that will work for underneath of the radiator. Uh, but the radiator in the stock hole location with this uh, T-Bird fan that's on here is dangerously close to the point where it's probably basically touching uh, when everything's mounted up. So what I'm gonna do is start by uh, ovaling out the holes um, on the frame rail here where the, the uh, radiator mounts. That will allow me just to push it back and give me like a, I don't know, an inch of, of room there that I could slide it around and get it set just perfectly. But I think about half an inch to an inch will get it slid and will give me plenty of clearance for the engine to move around and also won't um, cause any issues with the cooling. So I'm gonna start with that and we'll keep working on the way, along the way and hopefully we get a radiator all mocked up by the end of this. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go basically like one and a half holes forward, essentially, but um, so what we're gonna be aiming for is moving this hole forward. I'm gonna put a slot in here so we can move the radiator forward and back and get it exactly where we need it. Um, so I have a little uni bit to, to work for there, but uh, what I'm gonna do is start with our little pilot hole. All right, now we got these two holes drilled on both sides. Uh, what we can do is just connect them. I like using these little carbide burrs from Eastwood. Um, they're really handy for this type of job. And you can get them in there. And basically, I f if I can find one like this, it's like the perfect size. We can just kind of push on it and it'll open that, that, uh, that hole and, and create a slot when it's done. Uh, it's pretty close on this one. I may have to go to a smaller one, but we'll see. All right, let's see if we can, a little bit gave us enough extra room here to get some clearance on our, on our radiator. So I'm gonna leave it pretty much all the way up towards the front. Much better. Still a little close at the bottom, but I think it's, oh, there we go. That helps. <laughs> There we go. I think that's uh, pretty good. Gives us plenty of clearance. Not gonna have any issues with it hitting anything. Um, the only thing I'm seeing is we are a little close here height wise, but worst case I could trim the fan a little bit, but I think it's okay. Just this little like piece of felt or whatever used to go in here, this, this trim piece is already kind of loose, so. Might be able to trim that back, but I think that's okay. So I'm gonna tighten these bolts up and then we could start messing with our radiator hoses and see if we can get them working here. And I think there's enough room in the front end that it's not past the outside of the frame rails, so I don't think we'll have too much issue with the, uh, the front sheet metal with it hitting or touching the grill or anything like that. There's 
nice thing about these cars, there's a lot of room in the front ends. So that little inch that we moved it forward in the frame rails, I don't think will cause too much problems. And if somebody was going to say or ask, the reason I didn't, you know, you could have moved the whole drivetrain back, but we are using a torque tube setup, so we're kind of limited by where the torque tube needs to sit in the factory transmission. So in a different situation, certainly you could have shifted the whole engine and trans back if you were getting a drive shift made. But since we're working on a car where that was fixed, we got to make these mod modifications here, unfortunately. But no big deal. The worst we got to do is slot a couple holes. That's, that's a dream in my world. We don't have to cut the frame or do anything stupid like that. All right. So, I have this upper flathead radiator hose that is the right diameter to fit over this water pump here. And I'm wondering if we can kind of coax it to fit how we want over here. I was trying to save myself buying a $30, $30 hose or something. But I think if we do this right, it'll actually slip on there. And then our lower one here, I think just needs a little trimmy trim and it'll be okay. All right, so got the radiator mounted. Uh, fought this upper hose a little bit because it's quite tight uh, as far as the diameter goes up top here, but it uh, works pretty good. Pretty happy with it, everything. Um, I think it should seal fine and um, flow just fine down at the bottom here. I'm gonna have to make the hose is a little big at the bottom here for the radiator, so I'm gonna probably make a little double up some rubber hose to put around there that it fits snug and then run a clamp on it and it should be fine. Um, the upper is just works just well, but yeah, it, it runs and fits good. We got plenty of clearance in here. I know it's hard to tell, but I can fit, you know, fit my fingers in there almost up to like the knuckle there. I can fit in. Um, so I think we should be fine. It's nice and sturdy now. So it's not really going anywhere too much. And especially once we cinch up the bolts down here at the bottom, it should be fine. So now that we got that done, I have this port here that we need to uh, cut off and fill. And we have that one down there as well that we need to cut off and fill. So I'm gonna tackle that next, pull everything apart and uh, cut some pieces and see if we can braze this shut real quick. Instances we're not trying to do a stack of dimes. We're trying to fill a hole and seal this up. So I'm going to start by trying to find how it fits best and tack it, and then I may use the hammer and dolly to kind of tap it around a little bit. But see how it goes. This is always a, an adventure. As soon as I see that blob of weld kind of drop on there I, and melt into the brass, I, I stop. All right. I think 
It's a little more tricky because it's not magnetic, so you can't use a magnet to help you here. You gotta use weight or whatever you can do. So I have it at uh, 41 amps right now. My first tack was at like 35 or 38. It was a little, little low. It didn't blend in as nice. These other ones melted in real nice. And when you start laying the filler rod in, it, you lay a blob in there, and you'll know when it starts to melt into the uh, into the brass when it changes. Like the color of your of your arc will will change, and it'll even, it might even pop a little bit. It's just a nature of the beast, unfortunately, but. Um, that's how I can tell that it's melted in there and then you can let off and, and uh, especially when you're tacking, you can just quick let off shortly after. So I start on the steel, get my filler going, and I move my heat down. And you can probably even hear it when it changes. And that's it. So now I got this tacked. Try and close any major gaps up here. So our gaps are filled, and then I'm gonna try and run along and do a portion of it. to I'd be careful here just so we don't one thing I'm a little worried about is if this gets too hot it might actually melt some of the solder that's on there silver solder so I won't be surprised if I have to go back and weld along the seam um, I decided to try and weld this because if I can do it right I can get in there and and not have to cut into the into the face of it. It also leaves a little neck here. If somebody down the line somewhere decides they want to put a flathead back in this car, all you'd have to do is just add a little neck back onto it and you'd be fine. Uh, you might even be able to slip a hose on there. Um, so that's why I kind of did that. Uh, it also was a little easier for me to weld because I can get up higher on it. It's hard, harder when it's down in there. I was a little afraid to do that. So we'll let this cool off and then I'll do another short little run. started to heat up we'll let it cool back down and hopefully it'll play nice with us here so now we did that stop I'll, st I'll hit it again with the scotch brake clean everything up and keep working our way around and slowly try and do this without anything too crazy
All right, so I got both of them welded. Just hit them with the scotch brite real quick so you guys can see. So I just capped them off. Again, we could have done it another way where we put them all the way flat and um, welded a big square in there, but I was trying to do the least intrusive way, to be honest, and kind of also slightly lazy. But, so that's the top one. Bottom one across the way. With our steel patch in there, but you can see every time I went and welded, I backstepped like a dab or two and made sure that I melted back into it. So that way, everything should be fully welded. Um, we'll be fine, I think. So, should be all right. But actually wasn't too bad. The brass didn't fight me on this sometimes. The brass is really, really dirty on other things I've done and uh, they pop back and carry on, but this one wasn't too bad. All right, so I got the radiator mounted in place, dug around in my uh, hose clamp bin and found enough hose clamps that worked out really well. Uh, and overall, it was a pretty pretty inexpensive, uh, fun little project that took a couple hours. Uh, I ended up trimming this Tupper uh, flathead hose just a little bit um, to get it so it was the right length and it wasn't kinking too bad here where it needed to bend. Um, it worked out really nice because the piece that I cut off of here slid into the other hose and was kind of like the spacer I needed because the lower hose was a little too big from the Y block and it slipped over, tightened down. I think everything will work out just fine. Now I'm sure some people are going to ask about pressure testing the radiator. Uh, I'm fairly confident that what I brazed will be totally fine, but I'm not perfect. Um, uh, I could possibly leak, but we won't know until we run the thing and you know what? It's no big deal. I'll probably fill the thing with water and run it and try and flush out the system because we don't know what the block has in it. Probably has a little bit of debris from just sitting. Radiator from sitting around probably has a little bit in it. I shook it out and kind of blew it out with the air hose to get all the dust out of it from me uh, grinding and cutting, but I'm sure there's some stuff in there. So I'll probably fill it with coolant and uh, blow everything through and uh, run it, make sure there's no leaks. Then we can drain the system and we'll put some coolant in it and it should be fine. Worst case scenario, we lose a little, you know, if we have a little pinhole or something, I may even be able to fix it right on the car. Nice thing about TIG welding is you can do a tiny little repair and you're not heating something up, you know, with a flame that around fuel and stuff that could be dangerous. So we will see what happens, but I feel confident that my repair will hold and should be fine and uh, will be pretty good. So next thing we're going to have to work on is getting a bracket made for the generator to actually hold it in place. Um, and then we could figure out the length of the belt we need and then the cooling fan will be all hooked up uh, We got plenty of clearance here and the generator will be all hooked up with a voltage regulator that I just got So we'll have a charging system a fuel system. We could start it by sitting in the car Man, we're getting close. I can't wait I'm actually kind of excited to just bolt the front end back onto the car and it, it looks a little silly with no front end But it's way easier to work on right now. So thank you guys for following along on the 39 forgotten hot rod project we are coming up on one year of me owning this car. I bought this thing on my birthday with a bunch of other cars from the old junkyard, uh, which is June 1st. And we are coming up on that in about a month. So I'd love to maybe take this for its first test drive around the block, around my neighborhood, uh, if we can, by my birthday, which uh, I got a lot to do in about a month, but it, it might be doable, even if it's a little sketchy like the, uh, the 34 was. So we'll see, but that's my goal currently. Thanks guys for watching. Catch you later.